Mark. Do you know do you know his last name? <laughs> Mark something. That's true. It is Mark something. Uh from Soft White Underbelly. So that is a program that I guess typically interviews like drug like recovering drug addicts and you know the downtrodden. And I guess that's where Chris D'Elia falls into this is that he was canceled. And uh, so Mark something I think has had people go after him in the past. So I guess maybe he feels a little sympathetic towards Chris, but I, this is my only time watching this guy's show, mm-hmm. but just using this as the barometer, he's a terrible interviewer. <laughs> he didn't push back on anything. <laughs> he doesn't ask a single follow-up. He's a worse interviewer than Shannon Sharp. Wow. Shannon Sharp did more to push back against Cat Williams than this Mark character on Soft White Underbelly with Chris D'Elia. Uh, Shannon Sharp just bringing in numbies, though. The biggest podcast of all time. Yeah, has to be. <laughs> it's weird. Um, but yeah, this is the first question. And Chris D'Elia talks about his childhood. Yeah, so this is just what I wanted to set this up to kind of show the tone of the interview. Um, like they go back and talk about Chris D'Elia's childhood and his um sort of mental health issues i guess you could call them um so this is setting the scene for chris delia playing the victim throughout this interview i said i couldn't sleep when i was a kid uh my parents like took me to these doctors and the doctors were like show me a bunch of pictures what do you see when you see this and i was just like i don't know fucking I, 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 is it young tits doc is it young tits and pussy is that what this is a picture of <laughs> my slave <laughs> no chris those are your last nine guesses <laughs> when they write is it, it a young girl in shackles is that why, why am i seeing that every time is that right i don't know i'm fucking eight i don't know if i'm supposed to say a face or a butterfly and like uh and then they're just like yeah he's basically they're just like yeah he, i don't know what they say to them but like yeah your son's just different you know and you're like okay everyone's Wait, fucking how different. medical yeah, as it turns out that's true, actually, though. I don't know. Your son's weird. Uh, <laughs> Something's yeah, off. Yeah, good, good thing you brought him in to us, the medical doctors, because now you know he's different than other kids. We can put him on a list early. Yeah, hey, that'll be $9,000. What? He's different. We told you. We gave you the answers you came here for. Is anybody else distracted by his outfit? Did he just get back from mandatory volunteer cleaning up the side of the highway for the federal? <laughs> oh, what's he, he's, what's he he's wearing? Dressed. Well, he's wearing a full button down. The top button is buttoned, and it almost seems like the top part of a jumpsuit. It does look like he's missing a high-vis vest. He came directly from community service. <laughs> yeah. That top button being buttoned, I just know, is a whole conversation. Well, David, that's, that's a th- he's, he's looking contrite. You know, the point of him doing this interview was to gain our sympathy. And I, I swear to you, like, I I don't know what Chris D'Elia is guilty of. I only know what he's accused of because he's never addressed the accusations real. Right. In, in, any, in any sort of real way. So this interview was done entirely to be like, hey, guys, I'm the victim. And I'm still not going to address any of the issues, but I am like the victim. And this Mark asshole does nothing to push back can we find his last name people sure are suspicious that. that this mark fella has some allegations coming down the pipeline for himself maybe because he works with all of these you know people that are in the sex industry maybe he has a scandal coming out of his own but somebody did point out i was reading apparently he recently interviewed a divorce attorney so he is kind of getting out of that just the dredges of society and trying to get into more normal people at least normal people that defends his point of view on possibly affairs and whatnot Yes, he's trying to interview more normal people. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Delia. Mark Leita, L-A-I-T-A. Leita. Yes, 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 yes. Man, I remember there was, just, there was one time where I was in science class, and the two people that were making fun, that people were, that, that, that the bully was picking on was me and another kid. And um, I remember feeling really bad for the other kid because... In my head, I was like, I know, I know, I know I can turn this into me making the bully laugh. And I don't know if that kid can do that. Yuck. Oh, and I I have a superpower that this man doesn't have. 
<laughs> I'll laugh him off me. Ah, oh, if only this kid could learn the invaluable lesson of saying words over and over again in different inflections. <laughs> and look, we were 15 back then. And so you become accepted. Yeah, I did. I became accepted to that guy. And I remember the rest of the year, he still kind of bullied that kid. And I didn't defend him at all. Off <laughs> I did um, I did absolutely nothing. Much as I do as an adult, I did nothing for the safety of children. I played cool. I walked around the corner and went, oh, thank God he left me alone. <laughs> I imagine in this story, he's just doing a very funny impression of the other kid that's being bullied, and then they're all ganging up on one person. You just pick a common enemy, and then you're out of it. Yeah, this kid should have told, uh, Chris D'Elia should have told this kid, just be like, I'm being bullied. I'm being bullied. I'm being bullied. Like, just say it over and over again in different ways, and then you could be a comedian that sells out theaters. I don't get what that means. <laughs> I remember I remember thinking, like, I wish I wish that I wish that didn't happen. I wish. But I was the truth is, I was but I did nothing it. about it. Wow. Well, this wait, is so. this is this is like uh, Carl always talks about John stuttering John, the him offering a favor. He will hold against you as if he actually did that favor for you. And this is Chris's thing is like, oh, I kept thinking to myself, boy, I wish that kid had a great life. And that's that's pretty much the equivalent of giving this kid a good it'd be, life. It would be so stopping cool. the bully. It would be so cool <laughs> if someone who figured out how to get the bully off and help this kid out have the same thing happen. But fuck that. Yeah. Man, it'd be great if someone could use their experience to help this kid. Anyways. <laughs> I was just kind of. But that, you know, that comedic talent is, is an advanced social skill that not everyone has. Yeah. And, and the you people know what, that are victims get swallowed up. And you know what's funny is uh, I'm friends with that bully. <laughs> oh, <today>. my. <laughs> Hold on. I like that He's reveal. maintained one of those relationships, it sounds like. <laughs> I, thought, I thought for sure it was going to be like, I called that kid years later. I've made his life better. I gave him a job. He's like, no, you know who's a great guy, actually, in this story? The bully. <laughs> You know, we, we actually do a yearly trip where we go egg that guy's house. Hey, you know, what's interesting about the story I'm telling you, Mark, and please don't ask any follow-ups or have any insight on this. I actually sided with the predator in my story. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Anyways, moving right along, because I know you'll have nothing to ask about that. Yeah, naturally, there's nothing wrong with me, right? <laughs> no, there's no pattern of behavior throughout my life, even through my own telling of the story, that would indicate I side <laughs> with the aggressors in a situation. Chris Toothill in the chat says that was a hilarious ending to that story. That might have been the funniest thing he's ever said, and it can wasn't we, supposed to be. What a turn. Can we hear the end of that again? Yes, we can. Just because it's it's such a buildup of Chris saying, like, man, <laughs> I felt so bad for this kid because he doesn't have the gift of humor. He can't yeah. perform magic with his words the way I do. This kid can't even make me want to be friends with him. <laughs> and I felt bad for him the whole time. <laughs> this kid was such a loser, and I and I pitied him. And I, I hated getting bullied. So here's the result of, of that uh, concurrence of events. You know, that comedic talent is it's an advanced social skill that not everyone has. Yeah, And, and the people that are victims get swallowed up. And you know what's funny is... Uh, I'm friends with that bully today. <laughs> yeah, my victims do swallow, actually. You know who's a great guy is uh, Dr. Bill Cosby. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> that bully, actually a great judge, friends to this day. <laughs> Still friends. So that's Chris kind of laying the groundwork. In the first, I would say, 40 minutes of this, I was like, are they just having Chris on to tell sob stories about his childhood and how much he loves his dad? Like, this is literally a question that was asked is, do you love your mom more or your dad more? Well, the, and he was like, ah, geez, that's a tough one. It's weird. He looks like he's sitting in front of a backdrop that you would have at like school photo day. Right. Oh, and what he, a dream that would be for him. And, he, and he's just <laughs> having like nom like flashback face. <laughs> yeah. So Mark Leta of Soft Wet Underbelly is just uh, soft is the best description of this podcast because <laughs> he's lobbing those softballs into Chris <laughs> saying, Hey, no, I'm not going to push back on anything. You say <laughs> even Chris is stunned as we'll see in this next clip that he even brings up the thing. We <laughs> were like, well, Chris, Chris, must have I, did, assumed. Chris I didn't, must... I, 
<laughs> oh, sorry, David. Go on, Mike. It's your show. I'd hate to interrupt. <laughs> I was just going to say that the show starts like it's kind of like they're just having a natural conversation. Like, oh, geez, are these microphones even on? Mm-hmm. And it's Chris going, hey, man, I really love your show. Like, you're doing something really important here. And Mark's like, oh, well, thank you. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we have a, a question about Delia's greatest hardship. And I'm stunned he didn't say his marriage. <laughs> oh, I am married. The, the old battle axe that I have at home. <laughs> but what's, what's been the roughest thing you've had to deal with in your life? In my life, the roughest thing I've had to deal with was uh, being canceled uh and yeah, committing the rapes those were easy <laughs> grooming those were these, easy as pie but getting caught <laughs> grooming these women for four years and maintaining the knowledge of when they turn 18 was really <laughs> difficult so here's the thing david by the way are you very familiar with chris Delia's situation Yes, it's, uh, this is a crazy thing. You know, I wondered uh, at this moment, especially you expect Mark to say canceled for were you on the TV? Are you a comedian or something? It's almost as if Mark <laughs> had read one article and thought, oh, this is just another pimp that I could have on the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, saw, I heard you on uh, Rogan years ago and I just thought <laughs> I just thought you'd be an interesting guest. Yeah. So my history with Chris D'Elia has been this. I, not with him. I don't know him personally. I just mean this story. Um, when the accusations came out, I was like, oh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot here. Like these aren't backed up by facts because every message that people are showing is like he waited until they were 18 to correspond with them. Then his apology came out about eight months later. And we covered that. That was great. And I was like, oh, this man's got to be guilty of something (laughs) because he's not (laughs) acknowledging anything he ever did or was accused of. Right. So that's when I started to think something was weird. And then the Kyle Anderson documentary came out. Yeah, because if you look at Callan's uh, apology or acknowledgement of it, he was like, this, what I'm being accused of, straight up didn't happen. Right, yeah. And that doesn't always mean you're innocent, but Callan did fight those charges. Whereas Chris D'Elia had the Kevin Spacey defense where he's like, you know what, guys? Mm -hmm. I'm actually gay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's like, hand up, you caught me. I cheated on my wife. (laughs) And yeah. I thought, I thought there's no fucking way he's going to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to do a video on Christmas Eve with Rachel Maddow. But this is, and, <laughs> and you're right, David. I think that like Mark Leta would have been perfectly okay with just not mentioning it. And Chris was like, well, the whole point of me being here is clearing my name. We're 40 minutes in. You haven't asked me about getting canceled. I guess I'll wedge it in right here. <laughs> he's going to ask me about Whitney, the show. <laughs> Yeah, I you were a big undateable fan, Mark. A hundred percent. It was the hardest thing I've had to deal with. Um, I would say, yeah, it's got to be terrible. You know, being in the public eye. Yeah, and it's being, being singled out like that. Almost as terrible <laughs> as being raped. <laughs> would you say if you had to pick one or the other, which would you be on the receiving end of a rape or what happened to you, Chris? Well, Mark, you might say that I was held down by the public. <laughs> <laughs> it's like metaphorically, it's like I was weeping and a man shoved his cock into my mouth and said, just do everything that I say and it'll all be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what it was like, actually. I I, I know we t- like it's gotten talked about to death. But the fact that he was in that show, you playing exactly what he got canceled for, will never not be funny. Oh well, sure. And uh, workaholics. He was also a pedophile in workaholics. Was he? Oh yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen that one. That's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> He's just typecast. This guy's never worked a day of his life. <laughs> if you do what you love, David, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. It's horrible. It's um, it's horrible. What I did to those women. It's <laughs> again not it's talking funny. about the Kyle Anderson documentary. <laughs> he's talking about he's talking about the backlash on Twitter. <laughs> if this if this uh, interviewer was funny at all, he would have been like, "Did you know that uh, Snapchat videos can save?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Mark, ask about that. That's the thing I'd love to hear Chris talk about. Is like, yeah, if, even if he bullshitted us, if he just said like. 
I know everyone links that to that. I, I just genuinely didn't know that thing about Snapchat, but it is a funny video. Like, say whatever you want about it, but say something about it. Like, you've literally never answered a single question about this case other than saying, like, you know what, guys? You're right. I was a pussy magnet for a long time. <laughs> That's not the issue, Chris. This was a time when a lot of guys were being picked on right Taken now. down, yeah. Taken down. Picked There's on. not... Um... <laughs> yeah. Excellent, yeah, but... Excellent ob down. observation, David. Yes, uh, people in jail for rape <laughs> were picked on by the legal system. He's like, yeah, I just got lumped in with all the other comics, you know, me, Louis. <laughs> well, again, like Louis, like I defended Louis, but yeah. like I think he kind of addressed the accusations that were made. Chris mm -hmm. has had, and maybe they're false. They very well, these could very well be false allegations and maybe his lawyers told him not to talk about it or whatever but chris was accused of rape louis ck never was yeah it, well, if if his lawyers were telling him not to talk about it he wouldn't be sitting on this camera going getting canceled sucked <laughs> yeah me shane gillis tracy yeah. morgan gilbert godfrey <laughs> all the guys <laughs> all the guys that got canceled in comedy all the greats <laughs> And if you look now past now that everything's kind of settled over both of the Crystalia and and Louie, everybody has an opinion. You just look at the names of each one of their comedy specials since one, I think, is I'm sorry. And the other one is doubling down. Am I, am I incorrect? Or that, is that right? Is grow or die as if to say, like, I'll, I could just fucking kill myself, <laughs> but I guess I'll stop raping women. You're spoiling you're spoiling the future of this 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 clip, Mike. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't remember I think... that. I think it's this one. Oh, okay. It's always weird. It's it's always interesting be. talking about it because there's no, I still feel like there's no real right way to talk, talk about it without people. Without incriminating myself. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way my lawyers are comfortable with this interview. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the damnedest thing. Anytime I talk about this, honestly, people are like, hey, you raped a bunch of girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, being angry at. Yeah, all sides the, of the, it. The, both sides have you know a, what I'm a saying? stand on it. Well, the truth is, people. Hey, Mark, what's the other side's stance? <laughs> That's good. I, would... I can't get past that in this interview. If you don't know who Chris Delia is and you're just watching Soft White Underbelly, you don't know what this guy was railroaded for. Yeah, I was just just like... say, this guy's getting railroaded right now. <laughs> he didn't do anything. But the way they're talking about if. If you never heard of Chris D'Elia, you would think he got canceled for jokes, the way they're saying it. Oh, I know. I know. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's, you know, whatever the media makes something out to be is not the truth. It's just not, <laughs> no matter what way it's going. It's just... Um, He's got a point there. You've, you've shown that today, Mike. If, if the next words out of his mouth are like, uh, like what, Blind Mike tweeted the Mark Norman video, and they didn't even, like, research... Where did this video come from? <laughs> DJ Electrify was in Chris D'Elia's DMs, pissed off for these women. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a big fan of the show. He's like, listen, like <laughs> Hack Ride bullies Mike all the time, and then, <laughs> but then Mike just goes on the show and blurts it out. We don't know what really happened. You know? <laughs> Is in the media, good or bad? You you see that, but I think the com the common person doesn't. Um, and it's 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 really wild. It's really wild. Um, it's really wild. Yeah, I'd like them to see the the sexual assaults committed, and and then judge for yourself, like an adult. <laughs> oh, the the part I was alluding to isn't this next clip. It's the one after, I believe. Oh, but, goody! What a tease. <laughs> we get we get into that, but uh, what's this? Uh, this is Delia talking about the truth. <laughs> oh, good. Fine, David. Finally, you were. I, I assume you were worried that the truth was not going to come out. <laughs> we're going to get to it. That's true. His can't, uh, uh, Eris, whatever this person in the chat says, his his cancellation was nothing compared to Steve Renazizi's. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing is like Steve Renazizi just told a fib that got oh. out of got out of control. Crystalia may have <laughs> committed rape, and I don't know because he won't talk about it. And that's what's making me think it happens, <laughs> right? Because if I was accused of that, I'd be like, uh, no, that didn't. Uh, well, that kind of goes against the argument, hey. though. Hey, what? 
That's not true. I'm <laughs> saying you're saying like if a rapist came out, he would say, "No, I didn't do those things," and that's kind of against what we're saying. I'm saying if Chris is innocent, your advice is from the standpoint of someone who's guilty. No, 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 no. no. I'm standpoint of someone just walking his neighborhood. Let's say. Okay. I'd love to ask Chris which side's tears were real. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good. That's actually a great question. They would be a much better interviewer for this. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm honest, um, you think okay. Something that I would go always go back to, no matter how hard it was, um, during that time, I would I would say like, everything's okay because no matter what, I can I can end my life. Oh, and this, this is the part. <laughs> okay, this, now here's this is the here's part. what's very interesting, David. Did you watch that um the Chris Delia problem, the documentary about him? Not not recent enough for any real memories there, but I do understand that. He would tell his these women that, you know, if you were to come out about these allegations, I'll have to kill myself. That's yes, that's exactly right, David, is he would manipulate people by using suicide as like a threat or leverage or something saying like, hey, if you leave me, if you stop talking to me, if you if you do what if you do something I don't like, I will kill myself. <laughs> and so it's interesting it's working on matt Leta of soft white underbelly <laughs> it's like oh geez i don't want you to kill yourself so i guess i'll ask zero follow-ups actually you might as well do that because then your son won't have to explain who you are to people <laughs> okay because no matter what i can i can end my life and and not Oh it. yeah, well if you guys think I'm a rapist, I guess I'll just kill myself. <laughs> you can find me hanging from the bathroom. He stomps away. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'd just be better off dead if I can't <laughs> rape anyone. Someone clipped that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you guys suck. You never let me rape anybody. I'm gonna Kill myself. <laughs> Go ahead, hack right. Have fun with that. Yeah, please. That, like, all good. Everything's fine. You can always end your life. It got that bad for you. Well, hey, Mark, how about asking him, don't you have a wife and child at this time? Wow, it got that bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you Chris retire? <laughs> yeah, that's also an option. You don't have to, you know, drop the fucking atomic bomb, Chris. You got a waste, vacation. You got away stuff free, but just go right back to the public eye, Chris. His son, I think, had just been born when these allegations started coming out, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, or or his wife was pregnant, one or the other. But like, he had a wife and either a kid or a kid on the way, and he's like, well. I guess if these ladies won't pipe down about me, I'll just kill myself. I'll, kill, I'll, kill I'll myself. do the noble thing. <laughs> Everyone will be much better off for it. <laughs> what a selfish guy. Yeah. Like that's that's the thing is where like if you suffer from actual like mental health issues or depression or whatever, people that call suicide a selfish act, I think are completely ignorant to what yeah. um being suicidal actually is. I used to be one of those. It's a it's a selfish act. When Chris D'Elia says, oh, I'm in trouble, I guess I'll put a gun in my mouth. Everybody would be rethinking their whole opinion on comedy suicides. People would be re-digging up poor stories about poor Brody Stevens. It wouldn't even be appropriate. <laughs> right. That's right, David. Let's, let's not start that room. But yeah, when you use it as the eject button, it is a selfish act. <laughs> if, you're, if you're genuinely dealing with, struggling with those thoughts, you should seek help. But if you just use it to taunt people, like, if you keep calling me a rapist, I might kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, you're not a rapist. <laughs> um, mm. Was there some truth in the allegations? <laughs> I was... Uh... <laughs> okay, so for the visually impaired, the face he made when he asked that was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? what does truth mean? <laughs> he's like ah, truth smooth you know what i'm saying what is, I, matt what is truth? that's the closest by the way that matt gets to a follow-up that's a great yeah. question 
Will. He's like, hey, Benny, you wouldn't lie to me, would you? Mark. Mark, we're doing <laughs> this. Matt, Mark. We're doing the Mark. <laughs> All he, the... he might as well be Opie's co-host. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let's, let's see. Uh, yeah. I was a womanizer. Um, <laughs> um, Hold on. You're not Tiger Woods, Chris. <laughs> People weren't upset because they thought you were a family man and it turned out you were getting pussy. No, the accusations were a freight. Yeah, he went to Shoney's, got some waitresses, and became the best comedian of all time. I, was, I know you guys, listen, I know that I was out selling Buicks to you, but... <laughs> Well, but least, I'm just a man with urges. <laughs> at least Tiger Woods was going to Perkins. Chris D'Elia was finding these Perkins. women at fast food restaurants. <laughs> and no, I mean, what I was canceled for was is was not the truth. Uh, okay, I, um, I got to defend Chris here. It's the first time I've ever heard him say that. <laughs> first time. I, it's, I, I'd have to go back and watch the apology. It's possible he slipped it in there, but I really don't think he did. Yeah. Is it possible I think that's the first so time I've heard him address that. Yeah. It was kind of like the Kobe Bryant. The only thing I'm guilty of is adultery. <laughs> That's right. But it doesn't matter. I wish it, it was like Kobe Bryant. Exception is kind of hope so. a lot of people. Um, I was out there uh, having sex. I mean, I could become a huge fan of Chris D'Elia if he started doing stand-up with the number 24 on his shirt. Like Chappelle's <laughs> like his, his reincarnation. <laughs> well, listen, I, I was out there being fucking rad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my hand was sore from all the high fives I was getting. I was out there being cool as hell. I was out getting pussy. Don't, don't worry about how old they are, Mark. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, all the time uh, with with people I barely knew, you know. And that's I realized how was he a Christian now? <laughs> yeah, he's born again. I was I was laying with women before I had really got before marriage, <laughs> and that of course is what my fan base is angry about. <laughs> is that I was I was having sex outside of my marital home. That can get you don't know people's you don't know people. So you how do, how do you if you don't know them you don't know what they what they're tolerance for rapists like and what you know it's <laughs> i was definitely like and i had a chip on my shoulder too i was like well they don't Dangerous. nobody likes me they just think they, <laughs> you gotta find people that don't have social media accounts <laughs> this is he's blaming the victims i believe in this explanation he's saying yep. you're all strangers they don't know me i don't know them they don't know how dangerous that i am it's they shouldn't have been mixing up in these yeah. situations with strangers He's he's kind of saying like, oh well, if I had known how crazy these women are were, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have fucked them, I guess. <laughs> but this is like, listen to go back just a little bit because I want to hear this chip on the shoulder thing. Like you know, Jerry Sandusky famously had a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, it was him against the world. Craig, all these guys with chips on their shoulder. Yeah, it's actually an eight-year-old boy named Chip. <laughs> <laughs> how do, how do you if you don't know them, you don't know what they what they're what they're like and what you know it's you don't know what they're gonna accuse you I of definitely <laughs> like and i had a chip on my shoulder too i was like well they don't, nobody likes me they just think they they they, they, th they like me now they wouldn't have liked me when i was being fucking bullied in high school they just like me now because i'm fucking i'm on tour i'm i'm, I'm famous you know and i remember oh I, these shoulder. gold digging whore rape victims <laughs> I they see. Shame they, on them. They wouldn't have liked me when I was getting bullied in high school. <laughs> but I'm friends with that bully now. <laughs> don't, they, don't they get it? <laughs> He's the kind of person to like throw a woman in front of like a rapist. <laughs> be I, like, I, I, I'm gonna be friends with that guy. I don't understand like the me against the world argument he has here when he says chip on my shoulder. I know. As if Bill Cosby was, was like, well, I was an underdog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on television and all this stuff. <laughs> I pulled up my pants, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but here we get this is a long, this is a long clip. <laughs> this one. 
Yeah, well, I think it takes the entirety of it to understand the, the mania. Of, is this the one where there's a ton of silences? Uh, I believe so. This is the worst part. I would oh, say we're going to hear... I mean, a sorry, lot of eye know. movement. Anytime Chris is silent, his eyes are all over the place. It's the best. Yes. It's too bad that you can't experience that, Blind Mike. <laughs> I know. It is a shame. But I, it spoke volumes. I would say a lot more is said in the silences here than when I, Chris is actually flapping his gums. Yeah. What are the worst sides worst aspects of or what are the worst things about going through something like that being canceled your family's got to be yeah, the worst thing about it, it, mark had to remind me as a family <laughs> yeah clearly the answer should be uh my family has to go through it blah 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 not guys everyone hates me <laughs> he, he slipped him crib notes there he's like you're gonna want to mention your family here don't forget don't forget you have a wife that's what he calls his snapchats crib notes <laughs> His, his sex. <laughs> oh, let me check the crib notes from today. <laughs> That's very funny. About um, going through something like that is. Uh, people think that. I'm a bad guy. <laughs> they think that you're you're who you are online, you know, and that your Instagram is reality and you show the good moments. Yeah, that that was the problem. Was your Instagram posts. They thought my Snapchat was real. <laughs> hey, hey, this guy on his Instagram, he never once mentions that he's a rapist. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I, I was off the internet for a year or so. Um, Oh, what a void that was it's for good. all of us. It was only bad. And the one of the worst parts, though, about it is that they think is that people I don't think that, I don't think that they realize how much that stuff doesn't just affect. It doesn't affect only you. It, 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 it um, guys, I can't, I can't go to the stores anymore. It, my wife almost realized that I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much shit that could have caused me? That could have been a problem. <laughs> your, uh, it affects your dad, it affects your mom, it affects your, uh, your get family, there, Chris, your loved ones. And, uh, <laughs> ah, when, what is that bitch's name? Damn it. <laughs> All right, listen, mom, dad, sons. Who is the whore that I live with? <laughs> oh, my wife. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> his, do you know what his kid's name is? Has he said it? Calvin? Uh, I don't know the other one. Yeah, that's right. Calvin. I was I was thinking of Shaw, but well, which we'll get to, I guess. But the was his name? The kid's name was Boston. Yes. <laughs> hey, thick boys for life. That's right. Why does he mention that he was off the internet? What does that have to do with anything else that he's saying here? That's so strange. He says he's off the internet. What, like a terrorist organization? That's very that's, strange. That's where all of his shenanigans happened. Yeah, well, he's internet. he's listing things, David, because he has no real defense. He's just like, listen, I mean, if you don't think I've been punished, like I was off the internet for almost, almost a year. <laughs> Couldn't have been me. I might as well have been in jail. It's a tough grounding. <laughs> but yeah. that's right but like he he acts like he was essentially punished for his crimes but what he keeps like avoiding is that were he to be punished for his crimes that he's accused of the punishment would be far worse than anything he's received <laughs> that's what he's not grasping it seems is he is he's tiptoed through the raindrops he is he has been dancing his way through this he's selling out theaters still insane he, even though he may have may have i don't know may have committed a litany of crimes where wasn't he just at the wang theater here Is i don't know about just but yeah that's where he played last time he was in boston which is three thousand seats right mm -hmm. yep and ari shafir i saw is doing the wilbur which is like 1100 which doesn't make sense well, i mean it's still a huge venue but yeah yeah, but he's that much more of a draw. Well, Ari, Ari Shafir is the most dangerous man in comedy. Don't forget. That's true. He's um, what did that video call him? Uh, like the worst person in comedy or something. Something like that. I forget. Yeah. You, it's very hard to figure out how to put 
your house on fire out. Uh, <laughs> when people are mad, <laughs> just zip your pants back up. You'll be fine. <laughs> Hold on. I want to hear him. Like, why are people so mad about the accusations? <laughs> <laughs> what? They think I was with underage girls and sometimes against their will. Why? Why? What? Why are they out there with pitchforks and torches? <laughs> what is it about these allegations that gets under so many people's skin? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great question. <laughs> yeah. What is it about statutory rape that bothers people <laughs> so darn much? The thing that's not the problem. You know? Um, you know, I... I, I uh, People are, what you know people would be angry at a certain thing that I, I it's just as 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 that isn't true so okay I'll again give him that he's saying it's not now he's not saying what's not true but I will give him he's at least now finally saying like these things are not true right and maybe he's doing like that if I speak about him it's more in the front of people's minds. I may be back on Team Delia. Who knows? Let's see how the rest of this goes. That's that's the guy you want, Chris. <laughs> how this is why I got so deep in the in the woods of it. I'm like, I don't even know how to fix the right thing because people don't know. People don't know what is actually happening, so um, that's why I. That's why I. Um, that's why I couldn't really. What was the question? <laughs> yeah, that's why I wanted to. That's why I didn't want to. That's why I wanted to. Um... What? Yeah, that's why I wanted to end my life. But um, <laughs> oh yeah, that my. <laughs> seeing like my dad and like this my... is the guy by the way i saw people point this out and i think it's a good point like on his podcast anytime you've heard this guy talk publicly he's a knockoff Polly shore where he's loud and he's doing the inflections and all that shit yeah and it's weird he's also a good actor <laughs> like he was he wasn't you and workaholics and like did a good job he kept booking gigs those nbc shows he was on as we found out, though, he wasn't really acting, so who well, knows? Well, sure. Right. But, like, I think he's a professional actor, and I think you're seeing that in this clip where he's like, oh, Chris, this is what sociopaths do. It's like, hey, pretend you've seen people be contrite before. Replicate that. I think his wife's secretly rooting for him to do it. <laughs> Just please, give me your... Certainly make her life less complicated. Correct. And her <laughs> bank account pretty he fat. seems seems like an exhausting guy to be around oh. i don't know i don't know if this is off base by any means but after watching some of these clips i feel that evil rushes through this man's body like electricity <laughs> you could see it going <laughs> through his arms his fingers it's unbelievable he does I, seem like a manipulative guy like he's a bad <laughs> manipulative guy my wife and i had just brought a child into the world you know what um, this is he just brought the child into the world Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. He he carried the kid for nine months. It was that 10 months, actually. It was a, a ridiculous pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I know I always use Breaking Bad references, but uh, do you remember in Breaking Bad when Walt films the video where he basically says, pins everything on Hank? Yeah. This is that. Yeah. Where you're, you're like, holy shit. Like, he's because we know the perspective he's coming from. We are like, wow, he's a great liar. <laughs> he's unbelievable. This, guy. this is scary. <sighs> I don't know. It was just um, creepy smile. It was all he's got. <laughs> it's weird. It's been four years now and I. My life still sucks. I still have the thirst for young flesh. I was just out <laughs> having a coffee with my wife. If I mentioned I have a and wife. It a beauty, it's a beautiful day. And um, it was so nice and we were smiling and shit. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> I like that, is, how he's, that, that is a nice day. <laughs> I like how he's trying to be emotional. He's like, I was out with my wife. We were getting coffee and smiling and shit. Smiling and shit. That's how you know a good marriage. Hey, he two points, people are smiling. He points left when he says we're getting coffee, and he points right with my wife. So I'm not sure what he's what he's visioning here. He's very <laughs> arti- He's moving his hands and all these. He's trying to sell something. They're sitting on different sides of the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know the restraining order and all. <laughs> to 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 be in this room now and talk about that and think about. The feeling and to like force myself to not make a joke of it oh bad sentence which is what <laughs> yeah that's that's what happened when um when all these allegations came out about craig he, wa- he wanted to make a joke about it but he had a bottle of deep he's like no no this is a serious matter no no i got uh ahead of it because I, unlike delia i just said what happened <laughs> well i told you know- i told the exact truth Man, Chris Delia might have learned from Craig. He's like, yeah, maybe it's not always a good thing to get out in front. You just make yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's going poorly for this guy. <laughs> uh, as far as I understand, though, on all accounts, Chris Delia, a great neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he's very neighborly. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> I forget. He's he's uh, neighbors with um, some NFL player. I forget, and they always basically, from what he said, used to do basically the uh, Tim Allen Wilson. Uh, oh, that's fun. <laughs> I bet those stopped. <laughs> yeah, when Wilson was accused of uh, pedophilia, I think Tim stopped wa- wandering into the backyard so frequently. I'm, I was told to do in rehab. This is this is acting. Yeah. Is uh is difficult, but I guess it's necessary. You know, our favorite um things that he does is when he does the podcast with his wife and yes. I, I love when he did, it was i think it was the last one or the one before when he she brought up therapy and he was like i fucking hate going there oh we gotta talk about therapy again <laughs> i don't want to go anymore i don't want to go anymore <laughs> that's a guy who's really made some uh strides you know yeah <laughs> but here here's the thing with delia is like if he just came out and said something to the effect of like like, l- listen, I, people who are genuine victims of, like, crimes like this, I understand it's much worse, but, like, I don't think you know what it's like to be falsely accused of something. He's not addressing what happened to him in any way, other than being off Instagram for eight months. Yeah, but as we'll find out in this next clip, minds are made up, Mike. That's true. He's not going to change anyone's mind, so I guess what's the point? <laughs> They, they are trying to take every comedian down for when one way or another. Yeah. Right? Well, it's, now uh-oh. hold on a second. It's all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hassan Minaj may have fabricated some stories. Chris D'Elia might have diddled some young kids. <laughs> They're all in one big gumbo pot. <laughs> 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 they, they are trying to take every comedian down for when one way or another whether it's with what you say or accusations or what but yeah it's uh i think you, i think the goal is just ignore it yeah it is the goal is ignore do. it yeah the goal is a boy it. mark the enabler <laughs> <laughs> hey just ignore it when the cops come knocking at your door don't answer <laughs> he's like let me coach you how to get out of this mess Who knew but this, this is an great advice podcast <laughs> this is beautiful uh, like you know pr by chris where he's like listen it's exactly the same when joe rogan gives medical advice or when i invite a 16 year old to my hotel room they, somehow people see negative in that <laughs> and, I, and i and i'm here to say no more i think smart enough people can sniff out i think smart enough people can sniff out who you really are What's real? i think you know, and we and, have. And, <laughs> yes, that's the problem, Chris. We think you're a bad guy. Yeah, actually, unfortunately for you, we did. <laughs> Just like the wolf he is, to use a sniffing reference. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not up here right now, bullshitting, and why people are going to still think I'm bullshit, <laughs> and people are going to oh, think, "Damn, no. he trapped me." <laughs> um, fuck, I think he's bullshitting, dude. <laughs> so. Like I said, the only thing that matters, and it's hard to keep this in my mind, but the only thing that matters is the people who truly know me, know me. And the people- (laughs) Can I I say, by the way, bullshitting would imply like lying, right? Yep. 
I don't think Chris has said anything that's a lie in here because he hasn't said anything. Like we didn't cut out where he has some, you know, long in-depth analysis of what he was accused of and how it's not true or anything. Like so lie if may, and if I said lying, I used the wrong word. Chris is just completely avoiding all the accusations. He just hasn't addressed them at all. Obfuscating. Yes. That love me are the people that matter to me. Um and everyone else, if they like me, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. He's got a good perspective, at least. I, I want to be nice. Maybe I do like Chris <laughs> I don't think his wife's even, like, on that list. Of what? People that like him. <laughs> well, I mean, she's stuck by him. Loyal as hell. So you got to give her that. I think she likes the bank account. I mean, we can tell on those podcasts she is not... I, I don't know. I, I'll say there seems to be something where, like, she's obviously in love with him. I, I don't really like doing this about people's personal relationship. Yeah. But, like, based on those podcasts only, that's all the information well, we know. I mean, we we have to kind of, that's all he's talking about is his personal relationship. That's the quote story to him. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, she sees some good in him somewhere. So she, I don't think she thinks that they're all true necessarily. But it's just like, Chris, if you want to, like, Obviously, you want to prove your innocence. That's your, the point of doing this interview. Let the guy ask a few questions. Literally, all this cunt Mark Leta asked was like, "So, what do you what what made you sad in life?" And he's like, "Oh man, getting canceled." And Mark's like, "Oh, had to be tough." He's like, "Yeah, and that's it." Guess you just have to ignore it, huh, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hackride says, uh, this reminds me of stuttering John, no accountability. And then when it comes, you cry. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I changed those kids lives for the better. <laughs> uh, this is the last clip. Uh, the okay. most, most important lesson. Yeah. What was when you're falsely accused of sexual misconduct, what's the most important lesson you could take away from that? What would you say? Is I was asking you, Craig. Lesson you've... What's that? I was asking you. Oh, I, uh, I, you know. Go ahead. Let it click. <laughs> what would you say is the most important <laughs> lesson you've learned in your life? This is a performance. The most important yeah. lesson I've learned in my life. Rule of three. Go back. I got to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a, a robot finding sentience. <laughs> <laughs> Mo most important lesson what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life the most important lesson i've learned in my life yes spit it out should be easy chris don't rape anyone he really creepily smiled there and then continued the silence, which I'm curious. What was, <laughs> what was going through his brain when that <laughs> smile occurred? You have to work against the system. <laughs> his evil thoughts go through his body like a comet. You can see it. <laughs> Avoid Snapchat. <laughs> he apparently didn't learn anything. There's got to be 40 things you could think of, Chris. <laughs> Name one. Trust the audience. Probably, uh, <laughs> that. Age of consent in different states. <laughs> <sighs> Don't cross borders with that, children. Um, um, I'm okay as I am, you know. What? <laughs> <laughs> See, That's what you learned from all this? That's our biggest problem, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the way you were caused all this. <laughs> um, I'm okay, as I am, you know. So I've literally learned nothing <laughs> other than to accept my predatory behavior. <laughs> Dude, I'm not going to change a thing because uh, life rips. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if he walked out of this. Uh, interview to the song Predator by Crack Amico. <laughs> <laughs> Took a long time to realize that, but probably that. Based on his ticket sales, he might be right. It's probably that I'm okay as I am. <laughs> That's a good point. 
<laughs> you are. Thanks, man. <laughs> Chris and Leah, thank you so much. Thank they you. Hug each other. <laughs> Thanks. Oh wait, wait, hold on. Go back. It's weird how quickly he's about to tear up, and then they say goodbye. He seems totally fine. It's weird. He maybe he paid off this Mark Leta guy. Mark Leta is an asshole. <laughs> That'll be the name of this episode. <laughs> It's probably that I'm okay as I am, yeah. You are. Thanks, man. All right. Chris Delia, thank you so much. Thank you. Super interesting. Thanks. I Thanks mean, here. that's crazy. <laughs> it's super interesting, dude. Like, just immediately, wow. he's like, oh, oh, thanks thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Is uh, Do you guys validate? Park? I parked right outside. Is that okay? Are they going to tow me? <laughs> like, that's like when I cried on air. If, Mid cry, Kirk was just like, "Hey, we got to wrap up." I'm like, "Oh, geez, thanks for having me in. I'll see you guys later." <laughs> he didn't keep going. <laughs> like, there's no. He, just, he was he was on the brink of a breakdown, and then he's like, "Hey, Marky, good, nice job, buddy. You didn't uh, ask me any tough questions." Kirk 5K with uh, it's definitely the quote. It's not your fault scene. <laughs> it's the it's not your fault scene. If Matt Damon was like, "Oh, okay, scene's over. Good, we're we're cool then." <laughs> thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a few super chats here. Okay, let's catch up then. Um, box eating dab, two bucks. Craig, where are you podcasting from? No studio. I'm on the road, baby. Oh, um, Simon, three four three, uh, two bucks. Craig looks like Ed Sheeran. Is that right? I I can't imagine that's true. I've never heard that. If you're How going kind. To- country or whatever i've, I've <laughs> yeah, heard that seems very generous i've heard luke combs before which is more accurate <laughs> i don't know who that is but maybe ed sheer walk <laughs> <laughs> uh dang was... like the more i thought about it the more i liked it <laughs> uh dang lizard two euros uh this is back to the beginning of the delia segment uh that billy just had a great sense of humor <laughs> He was, a, he was a hell of a guy, that bully. 